Welcome to another My Two Cents video with Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo. In what would normally be called State of the Game, today I just talk about where are we at? I'd like to thank each and every one of you that are loyal and consistent viewers of my channel for giving me the opportunity to work out those Microsoft Flight Sim videos and how they would start fitting into my channel. I just needed to get a bunch out, see how that game was doing, but here I am back in that wonderful game that I love so much, ready to provide you with some of that amazing insight that I give you that you just can't get other places. At least that's what I tell myself when I sit down in front of the computer trying to figure out what I'm going to say after countless numbers of patches that all leave us feeling the same way. Is it done yet? Where are we at? So I asked this question to myself because I still enjoy playing the game, but when I have new people, I have a coworker that I just met online that started asking me about Star Citizen and asked me what ship they should buy and what they should do. And all I kept on thinking was, well, the, the game is still in development. Yes, I know it's been in development for seven years, but it's going to be in development for some time. And not all of the game is put together, but I really enjoy it. And I don't know, I, I don't know how I'm ever going to explain that to you unless you get in and play it and find that little special something that you like to do that makes you want to play it all the time. So we've been in Stanton for a very long time. Almost as long as it's been since we've been to the moon last. Now, well, that's not true. It's not that long. But longer than it's going to take for us to get to the moon from today. In fact, we may even be on Mars before the game is out in its entirety. Now, I don't want to scare you away. I don't want you to start saying, well, Nicole said that the game is never going to come out. That's not what I'm saying. I think the breadth, the breadth, the width, the breadth, the bandwidth. Oh, God, I don't even know how to say it. I think this game has grown into an enormous monstrosity, but not a bad one. One that's going to make us all happy in the end. But there's so many elements that have to be added into it. First, 100 planetary systems. We have one with another one coming online, and a number of them that they won't tell us about that are already complete that will be released inside of Squadron 42. So where does that leave us? It leaves us with a great number of star systems that have to be completed. But we also were promised many different professions, like exploration, salvaging, mining, and a great number of different combat professions like bounty hunting, mercenary, etc. And though we have a number of professions in the game, none of them are fully fleshed out. And some of them are going to start getting major updates in the near future, like cargo running with cargo decks, like mining with the refining decks, and possibly even a refining ship at some point. But still, certain elements that would make any of these professions easier are still missing from the game. Like a unified coordinate system so you could know where you are at any time by looking at a display that gives you the coordinates for the spot you're over. That way if you're mining or salvaging or exploring, you have coordinates of where you've been so you could send them to other people. There are ways to make that happen, but it's not easy. And if I just look at one of the professions, mining, we still need that profession fleshed out a little bit. And even though there are the refining decks that are coming into the game, we still need to fill out the category of mining vessels with more refining ship and different mining ships for mining different types of ore and gas. So I think those are things that are going to make it a lot more fun for us to take part in that profession. As far as cargo running goes, apps added to the Moby Glass, the cargo decks that are going to be in the space stations, and maybe a couple of ships that we know are coming, Merchantman, Hull C, Hull A, Hull B, 
Mercury Star Runner. Yes, I know that's kind of a jack of all trades, but oh my God, I can't wait for that. The Hercules, those are gonna start to flesh out that profession. And of course, in cargo running, there's also a sidetrack on that one, which is moving passengers around. And that's gonna need the Genesis to be in the game. I have a feeling that there's going to be this snowball that's just at the tip of a mountain right now that's just being pushed off the top of that peak of a mountain and it's going to start rolling down and we're going to start seeing a lot of these things come to fruition over the next 12 to 18 months. This is not going to be CIG suddenly riding the ship and getting things done. CIG is not following anybody's model. They're creating it as they go. They're not looking to get things out as quickly as they can. They're looking to get things out as fleshed out as they can and dump them into the alpha where they could then be tested by us, where we could then comment on how that system works. What are the bugs? What can be improved? I hope it's not like the flight model where they keep on changing everything every few patches and make you learning, you know, make you learn it all over again. But I understand what they're doing. They're trying to get these systems out to us. Let us play with them, tweak them, and then they'll worry about getting the bugs that make our lives more challenging worked out. So we are in an alpha, we are in early release, but little by little these things are getting done. And I'm kind of happy to see CIG isn't taking that stance of saying, let's just get everything in the game. I am very happy that they're looking at it saying, I know people are upset. I know people are looking for this and that and, and this ship and that ship and this profession and that profession. But they're making sure that they get them done right, not fully, before they actually implement them. And they're not scared to make the hard call and postpone or cancel something that they had in production only to look at it, iterate on it, or go back to the drawing board and give us something that actually works best for us. I know we ask for transparency. And sometimes that transparency is going to be given at 50 or 75% and not 100%. But it's still better than the transparency that some other developers have when they're developing titles. And we do have a lot of input because we're constantly making bug reports, we're constantly interacting with devs, and constantly challenging them and debating them on what actually works and what doesn't. So we do have our say in the way that this game is being built. We just don't have a say in the timeline. And sometimes things happen more organically. You can't get from A to B all the time. Sometimes you have to go to A to C and D and then go back to B because all of those elements actually have something to do with one another kind of like, well, let's just say, if you look at what, I'm, I'm gonna pick one out of the blue. I'm gonna pick salvaging. So salvaging, there's breaking down the ship, there's refining parts, there's selling parts, there's filling cargo holds, and then there's selling the item. So it's kind of a combination of a few things, almost like mining, almost, and cargo running and salvaging all in one. So it needs other elements to be fleshed out in order to work. So when I go in the game, what am I actually doing? You know, I hope every time I go in the game, I see somebody I know so I could fly with them or create some kind of emerging gameplay that we can have. And that's why I hang out when I do play with the members of the Cobra Force. They're awesome. They do a lot of that emerging gameplay and Although I haven't played with them for a couple months, they are absolutely amazing to play with. And they always find a way to have fun in the game. The finished game isn't gonna materialize overnight, folks. And we know that, and you've been here, and people are complaining, and they're pointing fingers, and they're saying Chris has mismanaged this. And all I'm saying is that sometimes it's not exactly for the reasons that you think. I think CIG just has a standard that they're trying to adhere to, a vision that they want to come to fruition, and they don't want to shortcut it to get it out. They want it to be done right. And sometimes we're going to be overly critical about things that we've been given, 
about things that we don't know about and we want and about things that they tell us that we're not going to get until they're actually ready. So I, I, I see the writing on the wall, and it's that this is going to be a great game. Every time I come into it, even if it's just for a short run like this, I have a great time. That doesn't mean that I don't have those facepalm moments where I go, CIG, what are you doing? Kind of like what happens after I take off. I should be able to just take right off. Instead, it sends me all the way down, back to where I started, and then makes me go up through those stupid little grid lines that are nowhere near where I'm taking off from, cross multiple landing pads, and then leave the area. All right, so I just told you how great they were, and now I'm complaining. And that's because I am realistic. Some things that they have great ideas about, they throw in to the game to see how it works before it's fully implemented. And they could be frustrating, kind of like when they added winds and people were flying around our corp and flying around Hurston and banging into things and crashing. And sometimes they implement something that works so good the first time, which I'm still looking for an example. Hopefully one of you put one in the comment section below. And we're just astounded that they got it right the first time. The most important part of Star Citizen right now is the community. The most fun that you're going to have is by doing it with your community. Get into a group. Join an org. Be a member of a group that tries to fly together. And then you will enjoy this game. That's not saying that some of you aren't going to get in the game and find joy just by taking out your freelancer or your caterpillar and flying between two places and making as much money as you can. Or taking out your cutlass or your eclipse and going out and just being the best bounty hunter you can. You may find that all you really like to do is fly somewhere in your, let's say, in your RSI constellation and taking out your Ursa and just driving all over the place and seeing as many sites as you can. Because you could do all that in the game. You can go and fly amongst every single asteroid that's in all the different asteroid belts that are in the Stanton system and never see every single asteroid. There's a lot to do. Sometimes I just like to land on Yella and look up in the sky and just stare at those rings and go, ah, oh, this is so beautiful. I long to be one of those people <laughs> that gets to be on a starship someday, but at my age, that's not gonna be me. I will not be going to Mars, but Star Citizen lets me do that. So where are we at? I would say we're about two thirds of the way in. The first third, was stumbling and trying to figure out the direction that the game was going in, trying to get the people together, open all of the different offices they have, and getting a collective vision. The second third was giving us what we have right now and building all the tools to continue in the future. And the next third, which is gonna be the third, that tip of the iceberg that we get to see, is gonna be how this game starts coming together over the next three to five years. And it's going to be that long, but it's not gonna be that long before it's in a condition for us to say, wow, this is a great game. We have multiple star sh systems and we're having a great time. I think three to five years is gonna be when we start looking at it and going, wow, there's a real, th there's an enormous amount to do in this game. More so than we could have imagined when we first got into that first Aurora that we received way, 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 way back in 2013 when I started doing these videos. I don't know about you, but I've enjoyed the ride and I'm looking forward to the future. Yes, I've been frustrated. Yes, I've been angry. Yes, I've been disappointed. But there's sometimes that all that just melts away when I'm exploring Microtech and taking in one of the amazing vistas that exist all over that planet and going, wow, 
They built this. I can't wait to see what comes next. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you're a subscriber or do subscribe, please click the notification icon so you get notified of all my future videos. I do have a patron. It's at patreon.com forward slash Batgirl. And you can help support the channel so I could continue to give my opinion and try to get back into giving you the weekly news, which I'm not going to try anymore. I'm just going to do it. And hopefully some of you are enjoying those Microsoft Flight Sim videos that I'm doing also. They are not going to preclude me from doing videos for Star Citizen. They're just going to augment my time and allow me to spread my wings, per se, into another genre. I love this game, and I'm glad that you are following me along in my journey to support Star Citizen. And with that said, you all be safe out there, and I will talk to you soon.